Well, for more on this now, William Shebas is a professor of international law at Middlesex University in the United Kingdom. He joins us now uh, from London. Thank you very much for your time. First things first, how significant is this trial? Well, it's not the first time that somebody has been convicted for destroying cultural monuments. We have some of the cases at the Yugoslavia Tribunal, and in fact, people were also convicted for this at Nuremberg. But it's in, a, in the modern period, uh, especially when we have many examples. We have the destruction of Palmyra recently. Uh, we have other attempts to destroy cultural monuments. And it's a very important message that the International Criminal Court is sending to people who are thinking of doing this sort of thing. It's a very also very positive, I think, that the person who's accused, who's now uh, admitted the crime, and uh, has, has expressed great remorse about it. And this is also, I think, going to be very influential. Were you surprised that uh, there was the guilty plea? Well, we've known for several months that he was planning to make a guilty plea. He has not contested this at any uh, point along uh, the way. And uh, this, this trial has been in preparation now for uh, about a year. So, no, that's not a great surprise. I, I was surprised when he first announced it. And it's a good development for a court because uh, it's the first time someone has offered to plead guilty at an international criminal court. You should have a certain percentage of people who are charged to agree to plead guilty. It simplifies things, it makes the trial shorter, and uh, it, brings, it makes justice more effective. You've mentioned the message that this sends. What do you expect the punishment to be? Well, I would expect that he'll get a punishment in the range of five to seven years imprisonment. Uh, I would think that's probably appropriate. This is about damage to property. People were not, uh, were not killed. At least there's no evidence or suggestion of that. And uh, ultimately, the damage was repaired by rebuilding them. People will say that's not entirely satisfactory, but it's, it's pretty good. And, and also his admission and his contrition when he has confessed to the crime is all going to weigh very heavily on the judges. I, w I would think it'll be a sentence in that range, five to seven years. And why is it important for the ICC to be focusing on cases where cultural heritage has been destroyed? Should they not be focusing more on cases where human rights abuse, uh, abuses have taken place? You know, the ICC has only really done a very small number of cases since it became operational back in 2003. This will be the seventh trial that it's concluded in that time. And selecting the, the, the places where it prosecutes has been a great problem. It has to weigh not only the seriousness of the crime, but it also has to weigh the uh, accessibility of evidence, the fact that it can actually complete the trial. And so it's a very challenging prospect. This is perhaps more an exception than the rule. It was a bit of what I call low-hanging fruit, because they got him into custody immediately. He didn't contest the trial. And so the prosecutor didn't have to invest very much in terms of resources to get this trial finished. All in all, it looks like a wise decision. But will she do things like this again? Will this become a, a focus of the work of the court? I really doubt it. I think the court is going to focus. They've already said this. They're going to focus on crimes of great violence. Uh, to individuals, especially where there's sexual and gender violence. Okay, uh, William Shabas, thank you very much for your time.